So um, it's Valentine's it's Valentine's Day, Day <laughs> and this is a this is a special shout out to you know two lovers who uh, may not be seeing eye to eye right now. This one's for you. This is one's for you, Russian Ukraine. It's just you know put on your favorite Al Green record. <laughs> Get all nice and and uh, you know, hot and sweaty. Mm. Lay down in front of the fireplace. I'm assuming on your big like bear rug that both of your countries have, <laughs> and just get it on. Oh yeah! I don't know what I'm trying to do now. Ah, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> It's your uh, your 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 special Valentine's quarter space. Yeah, we're trying to make Russia and Ukraine fuck. Woo! Trying to get you know we're trying to end this. Uh, we're trying to end uh, uh, um, end war. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's that John Lennon song? Imagine all the people, the Russia and Ukraine. Fuck it. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. That's with it. This. That's what I remember. Yeah, so uh, we're recording this on a f- Friday evening, mm-hmm. the eleventh. Yeah, and uh, you know the wires going, going, going ham right now. We're five Every- seconds before we <laughs> sit down to record. <laughs> Everyone and their mom is reporting about how, according to U.S. Tel- intelligence, which means that if you're t- legitimately stupid, you believe mm. this. Like, I'm sorry. You uh, you have no brain cells to rub together. You um, are continuously just your jaw is continuously agape and yeah. no thoughts, just smooth brain, just whatever the White House tells me, I believe. And they're reporting that then on a day that we do not know, um, the uh <laughs> russia will be invading ukraine yeah. baby for reasons that the us will still not disclose it's um i don't know, like okay but if you tell everyone surely it's not going to happen now right like they've spoiled the surprise yeah or it's just like a false flag operation that then that's just getting cooked up. Why? Also, like if it's a false flag, why would you tell people about it in advance? Just do the false flag <laughs> like, again. Like the U.S. is bad at co. What we did. All right, we've been doing. We've been doing the Gladio series. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah we're yeah. coming fresh off that. I was expecting a little bit more fun of an episode today. I was expecting, you know, no talk of the U.S. being fucking stupid. Yeah, you know, just vibes. Just Europe being dumb. I Horny can deal vibes, with that because it's Valentine. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um. You know, what if Erasmus was for never ending? Someone will finally explain to me eating ass. <laughs> I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I feel like it's blowjobs and eating, you don't actually blow. <laughs> no, no, no. Eating, it was, so it's it's ass, which is just the uh, um, the pa- the German simple past tense of eat. Oh, okay. That's, so it's eating and then ass. Oh, is this a translation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just past tense. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I thought we were going to sit down, talk about how Europe's racist in different ways towards brown people. Yeah. But no. <laughs> oh, well, that'll come later. Well, yeah. Yeah. But Fun conversation. I, I, I just don't get the fact of like, cause like one of the funniest things I ran across this week as well is that like the drum up for war and like the, we have to support the dear Ukrainians is like the son ran this piece on this woman who shot, a uh, who killed a member of the, the Donbass whatever it is, separatist yeah. group or whatever. And it's like, this freedom fighter, this and that and that. Oh, is that that one? They found their live journal and they are a, whoo, they are a Nazi, a yeah. capital, a capital N Nazi. Not yeah. the just like, they uh, said that history will remember uh, Hitler positively. Um, <laughs> oh, for fuck. Yeah, a little late on that one. Uh, that gay, just, uh, heterosexual people and gays should not be able to sit at the same table as each other. Blacks and whites should live in separate countries. Sure, 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 sure. I'm sorry, but like the whole the whole history will remember Hitler fondly thing. Just being like, you, you're you're watching a football match. Your team is losing like nil four, and it's like we eight, we got this. yeah we fucking we yeah. got it's like the 80th minute or something. I was like. We got it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, like you're already in extra time. You're like, no, no, it's cool. No, we it's, got this. We can fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's 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 like the yeah. Okay, it's it's stupid. So uh, the way that Cornish Beatty is going to respond to this is that I'm going to be dropping in behind enemy lines. I'm not letting you know mm. um, with an, an ancient rifle, and I'm just going to go go. Um, you know, I'm going to go bring peace and freedom to the galaxy. Yeah, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So serious chat about Ukraine and Russia, though. That I I because. This has also been like I, I think it was yesterday I counted I I hadn't touched my um my news aggregator in a while that just like collects all the articles for me and and by a while I meant like two days because I'm a freak <laughs> but in two days the Washington Post had posted had published sixteen articles about Russia Ukraine and that was the entirety of their like. European content. Why are you obsessed with me? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And um imagine listening to the Washington Post for Europe coverage. Pfft. I just I just I read the headlines. I, I know you what, do. Well that's all you what, need. Yeah. It's just they're just covering the rest the, of Babel, yeah, yeah. It's the, the the but yeah, like, news wire. So the genuine sources I do trust on a lot of this stuff though is still like you know uh, uh, U.S. I think was the first to make this move in the U.K. Followed like pulling out diplomatic staff. The response from Ukraine was pretty uh, swift, which was like, "Please stop doing that. You're just escalating shit. We don't like it. You're making people nervous. It's affecting things like tourism for us and stuff like that, um, and the economy because it makes people panic buy. Blah blah blah. So that's not fun. Zelensky, who's not a pro-Russian person, was still like, "Please don't do this." Um, there's that. I think, I think for me personally, the piece of evidence that made me feel like Putin is committed to like at least some sort of peaceful diplomatic solution is that he did have a five and a half hour meeting with Macron. Yeah. No one does that just cause the man's insufferable. Did you, you know why they had the big table? Why? Macron didn't want to get a COVID test. I did hear this. Yeah. He didn't want to get a COVID test and give his DNA to Putin. Being clone of macro. What's the what's the? He's angle so there? full of himself. Get another. I don't know. Like what he's like. They're gonna like get my genius. Like <laughs> yeah, Putin's gonna yeah, inject yeah. himself they'll make, with they'll the make serum. Make a version of me, but is like for Russia. Yeah, <laughs> Vladimir <laughs> Putin. <laughs> he already exists. Yeah. Oh god damn it! But actually, no. Putin's like a better like. I mean, okay, Putin's a piece of shit, but in the sense of like being being, Navalny, right? What Navalny? I feel like is like a Russian Macron. No, no, no. I'm just yeah. I'm simply saying in the sense of like Putin definitely has swag that no European leader has because I mean, like he's been there for fucking like 18 years. He's getting. You know? He's looking a little bit tired these days, though. No, he's, he's not. I, don't, I, I, I don't think believe. he is. Mm-mm, no, okay. no, no, no. He'll he'll never he'll never give up. Oh yeah, I don't think he and will. If he does, he'll just give it. He'll just give power directly to Medvedev. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. one or the other. Um, yeah, but, well, the, so the thing that then also kind of became of concern to the United States is that so Russia has been as anyone who like, I think we have to emphasize the fact too, the amount of arms that NATO has been spilling into this yeah. has been insane. The United States has just put up SAM missile sites recently that they are or they're technically THAAD sites, they're T-H-A-A-D. Yeah, yeah. They don't work, but it's just one of those things to show that they're like, they're arming up their uh, things. Um, there's only been ever one recorded case of a THAAD missile uh, deterrent shooting down a missile. So the U.S. said to Ukraine technology that even that's, if they were to have like a missile bombardment, just wouldn't work. That's a uh, which is cool. That's I'm assuming it's only happened once because it's only needed to be tested once. So therefore, it's a hundred percent. Yeah, it happened in like the UAE or Qatar. No, no, sorry, sorry, it happened. In, it happened in uh, in uh, Yemen. Sorry, Where right? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but okay, so like. All right, so the thing that got me very interested... First of all, for anyone who doesn't understand what's happening here, like the one thing that I, I find probably most compelling is if Russia was going to invade, they would have invaded. There's really like no reason why it would be delayed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> from all accounts, the military buildup on like within Russia, like near Ukraine, is not larger than it had been like in the summer of 2020. They also don't have the proper supply lines to do an invasion. Like yeah. if anyone has been paying attention to what Russia has like on the ground there, they don't have proper like supply run, like supply uh, infrastructure. They don't have proper medical infrastructure for if you were to invade a country. Yeah. You would need viable infrastructure in order to then he'd like deal with obviously 
supplies on the front line, and obviously yeah. you're wounded, and Russia has not done that yet. They've also, I mean, so the thing that then has become obviously of concern, but of the fact that then, it, I do legitimately think that it is probably more so on the fact of the, that, that NATO is just spilling weapons and missiles into all their, their allies, that, um, you know, uh, Stoltenberg went uh, and said that there will be more permanent troops in the Baltics, uh, like, I think, was it a few thousand or whatever? Uh, yeah. I can't remember what the exact number was. It doesn't really matter. But the fact of it is that then the bits of it that aren't being reported onto the West are the facts of, like, the things that the West are doing. Yeah. You know? So the, uh, The yeah. enhanced forward presence as well, which is, like, putting more troops into Romania, Bulgaria. Yeah. And while Germany's not sending troops to uh, uh, Ukraine, Germany does their thing of, we'll send them to Lithuania, which yeah. is cool. And uh, which, you know, wonder who they share a border with. And uh, Russia's then been doing exercises in the Black Sea with completely like like fully armed uh, destroyers and uh, uh, aircrafts in uh, Belarus, which I heard from your mouth today. Maybe the stupidest thing to come out of a member of the German government is that Russia is occupying Belarus, according yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, it's effectively annexed Belarus. Yeah, a uh, country that they have very good relations with. SPD Foreign, Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, Michael Roth. King. Who said that. Um, that is a stupid... So <sighs> That is the dumbest thing that is... I'm sorry. He wouldn't of- have to do that. He just wouldn't have to. Like... If Russia genuinely goes on the offensive somewhere, Belarus will just come. Like, they don't need to annex. Like, there's no reason. In much the same way that there is absolutely no reason for Russia to annex Ukraine. Like, it's unpopular with with Russians. Um, Putin's popularity is not currently being affected by anything. As as, As far as I know, he's doing quite well in the polls within Russia because of Kazakhstan. Yeah. Um... Yeah, like we have yeah. to forget too that the, you would gain nothing. Yeah, the initial thing of like with like Crimea and whatnot was not this like okay, you know, 2014. Yeah, U.S. is telling you that then the you know Crimeans are crying. Like I don't think people forget that then like in the majority of that population like were it was very split on the fact of if they wanted to be yeah. part of Russia or not, and like. The idea, and we've we've been re- like repeating this entire like I mean like on the show over and over and over again. This stupid fucking Russia Ukraine shit is that the U.S.'s view of like the ethno nationalist you know nation like perfect nation state. Ukraine is like hilariously not that. Yeah, you know you have to the east Russians, you have to the south also Russians and 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 Crimean Tatars, you have to the west Poles, mm-hmm. you have internally within the country everything's fucking mixed up. A lot of people don't even speak Ukrainian, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I... I, I which, yeah, which is also like this other thing that's been happening within Ukraine, like the, the language acts that have been like um, basically trying to force Ukrainian and make... Um, not make Russian illegal so much. They haven't actually gone that far, even though there's definitely some Ukrainians who would like to do that. Um, but they force like Russian local papers that operate in like the East... They ha- they passed a law that was like you also have to print a Ukrainian version and like a lot of them were just like we only serve like news in um like this one very small part of the east of Ukraine we really don't have the budget to make like two different versions of the of yeah. the same paper um, and it makes perfect sense for them that the people who are like the most vocal about this shit are the neo Nazis on the front line. Mm-hmm. And I know that it's like kind of this thing of like, oh, they're not all Nazis. This and that's like, yes, of course, not every person in Ukraine a Nazi is a Nazi. But the people that then are that the West is giving very much an atten- attention in terms of media coverage and in terms of obvious weapons and stuff like that yeah. are like you know, like sorry. Like there's no like there's no quite like that people within the normal Ukrainian army are fucking in there they're like live journals like reported on and they're just they're there are so many Nazis it just is is not even I don't know. It's like it, it, it like why would you want to even like bother fucking dying for that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like fuck it. Yeah, I mean there was genuinely something to be gained. Um there was genuinely something to be gained to annexing Crimea from Russia. They had like ports there. Yeah, Sevastopol is there. Yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. like they own the port. It's one of yeah. those weird things of, of holdings that they had post Soviet that still belong to them. But you also like it's important to know that like Crimea has 
voted in the past to become a part of Russia. Yeah. Like the idea that for most people I've heard who are like Eastern European experts and stuff like that, or like study this, um, who aren't like functionaries of an American NGO basically have said that like, it would have been very easy for Russia to rig that like referendum in 2014. They didn't yeah. need to, um, like they, they, they were one of the primary employers in Crimea. Crimea was largely ethnic Russian, um, like the ethnic Russians of of Ukraine have always been afraid of this like very ethno nationalist, very like Bandera Stan uh, Western Ukrainian yeah. kind of politics. Um, which it is worth pointing out that like the the real tragedy of Ukraine is that it's like only ten percent of the population that are just like these real fucking psychos. Yeah, about like, they're, they're the most the most vocal yeah they're the most uh not even necessarily vocal because like they definitely don't dominate the media as far as i know that's still kind of like taken by these yeah. uh wishy-washy liberal uh, um like look to the west look to the eu types they're just the most active they're the only like group that has militias they're the only groups that have like any actual structure i mean it's true Damn, like, you mean the far right is really organized militarily yeah yeah, yeah. that's but insane that's not that's not always historically true and um i mean the, the military organization of a lot of american far right is dog shit yeah true um but like like they, they claim it or whatever but you know yeah it's just it's just getting very it's very stupid Mamba number five playing in the fucking <laughs> background. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm going to... How, how cool would that be when we have, like, 30 years from now, we have, like, our, like, Apocalypse Now moment. Mm. But, but, like, you know, the, like, helicopters and, like, you know, all that shit. And it's fucking Mambo number five playing in the background. Instead of Ride of the Valkyries, yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah. I just don't, like... If we actually go to war... Yeah, like, I'm, I, I, I am going to war. <laughs> I mean, like, no, seriously, the, 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 so we had like reports that, uh, the OSCE, uh, are taking out their staff by Tuesday. So I'm assuming this supposed invasion would have to happen after that. So like, if with a bonus episode next week, we're at fucking war. Live from Kiev. <laughs> Live from the Polish, the Polish, uh, Ukrainian border. That's as close as we'll get in. Um, we're gonna. <laughs> the stream is just gonna be para dropping Nick into yeah, Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but like, yeah. Okay. Speaking of the 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 uh, um the, the like the kind of neo Nazi far right aspect of Ukraine being like this uh, dominant minority uh, of political opinion. The other thing to keep in mind is it's like a hundred percent captured the Ukrainian diaspora. Like every Ukrainian diaspora organization in Canada, you Australia, mean the ones of like US. people who I fled the country because I was a guard at a at a at a, at a concentration. Camp. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not surprising if you know the history at all, or that like <laughs> Lvov was like ninety five percent Jewish at one point. Uh, um, like, yeah, all of those organizations have been ca- uh, captured by what uh, O U N B O U N B. Yeah, uh, um, which was like United Ukrainian. No, Organization of Ukrainian Nationals dash Bandera. Because if any didn't know the organization Ukrainian nationalists had like a um a Shia Sunni moment where they weren't like <laughs> sure who was the real leader, but like the people who think Bandera was the real leader, you know, they won out. Um yeah, I, I mean, I'm sick of this topic. I hate it. Yeah. I fucking I, this is the stupidest bullshit of of since we've started the show. Just saying a lot because we've covered a lot of dumb stuff. But on one, I mean, for for our re, for our listeners who can uh, read German, and I'm assuming that you can have this article translated, yeah. a um, article from the uh, Die Wochenzeitung in uh, uh, the, in Switzerland, uh, uh, Anna. Uh, G- can't read uh Jikareva? i don't know it's in german so i would it's a german spelling of of what i'm assuming is a slavic last name so i don't know how uh, it's properly pronounced oh that's definitely then Jikareva or something like that because the germans are much better at transliterating uh, yes Cyrillic, okay so. so please yeah. uh um if you know uh please correct me in the in the what comments or whatever we have uh 
she wrote an article on the ground of what it, the current situation in Kiev is like, called uh, "Eine Stadt an der Schwebe," so like a c- city, uh, like in limbo. Mm. And uh, it's surprise, surprise. Would you like uh, Ukrainians are like living pretty normal lives right now, and the West is definitely you know, saber rattling far more than Ukrainians on the ground are. Yeah, yeah. And the something else that I noticed as well, too, is that uh, Deutsche Welle, I saw, was the latest culprit in this, hmm. have been, uh, they, they did a, um, you know, as true, you know, propaganda wing of the German state, they did a, um, they did a piece on this, you know, this poor Ukrainian who decided to uh, go and join on the front lines and train. Is this the, that um, the I, 40-year-old woman? Oh, her, her age changes all the time and her occupation changes all the time, too. Really? Her name uh, always stays the same, but her, she's she's gone from 40-something to, like, 60. Drew and on did a good thread of um, just posting, wow, look at this woman, and then like, the thread would be like, wow, look at this woman, quote-tweeting the story that had come up like come up a million times over the years. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. she has been uh uh I forget her like it's like Maria something. It doesn't she doesn't matter. I'm not going to give her the the time of day on the show because she's clearly like it's like there are hundreds of women like her. It's like then where are they? Yeah. Because it's only her. The best part about the Deutsche Welle thing is that she's armed with an airsoft gun doing military training, which is just the, <laughs> that, yeah. It's just fucking stupid. I, I, yeah, so she's, uh, you know, between the ages of, you know, 37 and 62, yeah. um, is her occupation is always changing and she's, you know, fighting for a free Ukraine. Um, and she's been covered once again, I think probably like, I've seen it at least like 30 times mm. in multiple different languages. Um, yeah. So it's really cool that then that the fair and balanced, you know, honest journalism of, you know, the German you know, open propaganda wing of Deutsche Welle is yeah. doing the responsible thing by giving a platform. I would love, oh, like, I bet her politics are fucking insane. Yes. <laughs> Either that or she just, like, doesn't have any because she's, like... She's just an op. She's the purest version she's of She's the purest op. op. She's, a, she's a deep fake. She's a hologram. She's actually <laughs> the first... She's actually the first person to entirely transition to being in the metaverse. Uh, they don't yeah. exist in the real I tried world. to do it I tried to do it once into the into the Wii. Uh <laughs> you tried to become a <laughs> tried to become a me. I just wanted to be cuter. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah, transition. Uh we mentioned my uh, uh where we were going next. Oh uh, well we're gonna we're gonna make a quick pit stop into oh. France. Wait, what about France? What about France? We're gonna talk some French updates. Because it's the year of France. Oh, I thought that was later. Oh, we can do that later. Yeah, we can do it later. Yeah, okay, the, the, the Deutsche Welle first. Then. Yeah, all right. Fuck so it. <laughs> my, uh, my favorite uh, uh, media outlet? I don't sure. know. What if BuzzFeed, but controlled by the German state? I mean, okay, yeah. So, like, every every country got one of these. Uh, um, what was the real, like, the hype moment of this? I feel like it was the 2010s, where suddenly... Every country needed their soft power English language news, even though they like, even though it comes from a country that doesn't speak English. So this is like yeah. the, this is the same vein as France twenty four, uh, Al Jazeera, Russia Today. Uh, what are any of the good ones? CCN, I guess. CNN. No, CCN. Oh, the the Chinese Chinese one. one yeah. yeah. Um, uh, TRT. TRT, yeah, that's a good one. That came kind of late to the TRT game. TRT is like. late. It's Turkey. It's late as hell to the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah, it was just kind of like very milk toast. A lot of it, all of it kind of like 20. 20- it's like a lot of the time, it's, yeah, it's just either buds, buds through like the big story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the big story from the stream. Yeah, it's 100% that, but like a 24 hour, 24 7 hour, like, news station. Um, yeah. Yeah. Deutsche Welle does the really funny thing though of that then they pretend really hard of being hard hitting journalism, but I don't think I've ever seen them break a story. Because yeah. like in Germany it's the DPA, uh yeah. so the Deutsche Presse Agentur, which is the German equivalent of like AP. AP yeah. AP obviously is one of the largest, you know, Reuters, um, you know, 
like a wire service mostly. AFP stuff like that yeah it's um all these stations though are like basically serving the same function as Emily in Paris <laughs> which is just like soft power projection tourism like I got really obsessed with like criti- video critiques of like Emily in Paris on YouTube by French people. And they're all just like, uh, you know, oh, that's a stereotype. That's not true about Paris. It's not true about France, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yes, you're factually correct. But these are all stereotypes that like massively benefit the French state and tourism. Yeah. Like Emily in Paris in its two seasons so far has not done a French people are always on strike joke yet. Which is like a very hack kind of like stereotype that everything, but they they do the ones that are like, oh, it's all about fashion and perfume, and oh, they're a bit rude. You know, the city's beautiful, the food's great. Oh, the work hours are really lax. Blah blah blah. Like all stuff that plays into this kind of like idealized version of France, and all these channels, Deutsche Welle included, kind of play into that vision of Germany as well. Um, like especially when they ever do those like the cutesy online like Instagram story things they do. Um, I'm sorry, this is not connected to that, but this reminds me of the Sophie Shaw one recently. Oh? Did you see that? No. So ARD, which is connected. I mean, Deutsche Welle is a part of the ARD, which is the German national broadcaster, yeah. the public German public broadcaster. But you pay the run funk too. Exactly. So we, we uh, I, I pay some of my friends. Yeah, you uh, work for us, Deutsche Welle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technically, I pay some of my friends. Uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, uh, I pay their paychecks with my set by Trag. So um, it's between the thing people do when they're arrested with the cops is like, you work for us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah my sovereign citizen thing. Or what's the thing of like uh, the, the the guy that British guy is being thrown into a car for? Uh, is he being arrested? <laughs> what well, yeah, it was my crime? Enjoying a succulent meal. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, so the ARD made a, um, this is completely unrelated, but this just reminds me of like the exact vibes of what you're talking about is um, they made a, they made a, uh, an Instagram account for Sophie Shaw, like on the, what, 70th or 80th anniversary Mm. of the whole, you know, you know, uh, Holocaust, uh, you know, uh, sorry, like, you know, Nazi resistance kind of deal that was going on. I think it was actually like the... 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. They were doing these, like, there was one for, like, yeah, uh, Anna Frank. Frank. There was one for Sophie Shaw. Yeah. They did another one for, like, the fall of the Berlin Wall. It was, like, a girl who, like, had an Instagram account. She's like, oh, I live in, I live in. Uh, God, I think, yes, I remember this. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, she lived in, like, um, like just outside of Berlin. Fuck, I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, oh, Klein Machno. That's where she lived. Yeah, all right. Um and the Sophie Shaw one, there's just a picture for the other day where she's just fucking like she's getting booted on some fucking meth. <laughs> she just is open. She has she has her mouth open, has a tablet of meth on her mouth on on her tongue, and she's like, "I love Panza Chocolata. It really makes you feel like wired and like you can really focus." <laughs> oh and no, she's just, having the cocaine chocolates. Yeah, the meth chocolate. Meth yeah. chocolate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking so Sophie Shaw is getting booted as like a thirteen year old. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. So that's where our money goes to. It's to Buzzfeed and to. Uh, you know, Sophie Shaw uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, doing math. Some of those uh, uh, cultural explainer videos that D- the Deutsche Welle put out on YouTube, which are like all not right. I feel that like the I feel a lot of the people who work there don't understand the country that they live in. But all like okay, so maybe I I would say I would say no, but okay, so I think Nick, you came to this. Our friend, friend of the show, Matthew, did host a a great comedy night once where. And the interstitial bits, he did like hack Berlin uh, stand up bingo, where he would just like pick a random thing and just start talking about it. Like, and he was basically critiquing a lot of like uh, uh, compares MCs in the city that do like jokes effectively for tourists. Yeah. And it's like not based on a real understanding of Berlin, it's based on this like fictional guidebook, Emily in Paris ass understanding of the city, which I feel like that kind of like Deutsche Welle stuff does as well. Like it's all stereotypes that is like kind of true, but like not completely or you're missing a lot of the picture yeah. or it's definitely not everyone. Like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we've described um, one of my uh, uh, 
personal vendettas on the show. <laughs> one of the nemesis, one of the many nemesis, nemeses. Uh, mostly just me. No one else on the <laughs> yeah, show is, really cares. This is your vault. <laughs> yeah. I think Yulia also. Well, the, the reason that I hate Deutsche Welle comes down to, and again, this is, I feel that then, um, you know, I got friends who work at Deutsche Welle. I can say this. <laughs> Yeah, like you've got friends at uh, Deutsche Welle, so they give you like the pass. We can say exactly. This, yeah. We can, I can, we, we can they talk told, shit. They told us all the slurs for people who work at Deutsche Welle. Oh my god! And speaking of slurs at Deutsche Welle, oh, that's actually a good. Oh fuck. Yeah. So <laughs> stop uh, in, folks. Deutsche. All right, so we we had, uh, you know, someone leak to our show months ago after the, um situation last year in israel palestine i believe it was may if i'm not mistaken yeah i can find out very quickly yeah yeah. um that they had on a journalist from the uh from electronic intifada come on and was critical of of you know israel's uh you know very barbaric Mm -hmm. uh uh you know war of attrition that they've been doing mostly yeah and uh, Deutsche Welle then immediately sent out a a, um, a letter saying internally. Well, first off, they uh, they said, uh, wait, no, for, yeah, no. For, first, it was internally that they sent this letter around that we've that we've had posted on our page. It's been going around, you know, taking the rounds. We'll link it in the thing mm-hmm. about how to address anti-Semitism. Surprise, surprise! Anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism are the exact same thing at Deutsche Welle. Yeah, and it. Uh, preceded them to then remove the interview that they had with him. Ali Abuna. Abuna. It, yes, exactly. Yeah. It's worth putting out that, like, we've said it before on the episode that we did uh, uh, with the uh, Palestinian rights activist Flo. You can uh, give that a look up. Um, it's in our Operation Glad.io forward slash start page. It's up near the top. Um, we did kind of make this point that actually the interviews, like, I think the, the line that interview really crossed was actually the fact that it was very anti German. Because yeah. it was uh, it was talking about the role um, that Germany played in facilitating the stuff that happening. Yeah. Because um, yeah, like I, I, one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot, and we'll have to do an episode about this, is that the the idea that Germany's relationship to Israel and the Israeli Palestine kind of conflict and situation is like based on their historical guilt for the Holocaust. For me, it doesn't really add up when they added the, when they acted the exact same way to apartheid South Africa. Yeah, of course. So it's, like, and they had like no skin in that game, really. Like, or not a huge like they got skin in the game eventually because they wedged themselves into that situation. But like, yeah, yeah. and but yeah, so they they released this. The tweets up there. It's getting circulated again, which always allows me to know something's fucking up at Deutsche Welle. <laughs> yeah. So, uh yeah, what happened this week then? Cuz clearly mm. as we found out, we uh, we we found out through oh no, our uh <laughs> our mentions are blowing up on the show account. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, up up Deutsche Welle is acting up and they uh they fired five Palestinian journalists. Mhm. All for quote unquote uh uh anti-Semitism which they didn't specify. One woman literally just tweeted, I've been fired. Uh, like, I've been released from my post at Deutsche Welle, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So, um, there's... The unfortunate thing about this is that there's really not much more to report about it in the sense of that then it's like, I'm in no way surprised, of course. Yeah. There's always these, like, witch hunts internally within Deutsche Welle, it seems like to rid themselves of primarily you know brown people yeah <laughs> like, yeah oh 100 percent. like okay so uh um, one of the journalists fired was um it's great because we we find out all about this article because there's a bot that tells us when our tweet has been embedded in an article <laughs> so um this is going to be the weirdest fucking legacy of this podcast this will still be happening like years after we're done um so the journalist's name was uh, Maram Salem. Uh, she was fired. She was a Palestinian journalist uh, for a Facebook post that was allegedly critical of Israel. Um, so this is this. Yeah, that's the thing too. Is that at Deutsche Welle, I think it's very. It would be very clear that even reporting about violence against Palestinians counts at Deutsche Welle as anti-Semitism. Yeah. And you can someone. Oh, Nick, that's that's a little bit too ridiculous. 
Look at Deutsche Welle's coverage with things like when the IDF was clearing out mosques and the IDF was provoking, mm. you know, the when, you know, provoking the attacks that eventually came, the rocket attacks that eventually came as a retaliation to the IDF being brutal on the ground last May. Um, remember, it didn't start in May. It started the month before with, you know, Israeli troops on the ground bullying Deutsche Welle did not post a single thing yeah. about things from the perspective of them Palestinians being abused by the IDF. But then once rockets start going off, then Deutsche Welle started having a, you know, say in the thing about how, oh, you know, the barbaric, you know, how Hamas, this and that. Because remember, too, Palestine is always equated immediately with Hamas. There is no, you know, political, uh, uh, like, politics don't exist in Palestine. There's only Hamas, and every Palestinian then, at, at, within this perspective, within the German perspective, obviously, then is, you know, must be a Hamas member. Mm -hmm. So that's how, like, a lot of, like, the anti deutsch think of it as well. Oh, yeah, the like, yeah, Deutsche Welle. I mean, this is, this is always going to be a critique of the modern version of the anti deutsch movement, is that, like, when your policies and uh, when your beliefs and views of the world align perfectly with a, a new station that's largely run by like CDU functionaries, um, yeah. Jesus Christ, man, can you not look in the mirror for five seconds? You know, that Deutsche Welle had an internal uh, policy for a very long time that they would not hire anyone who would work for Russia. Sure, they have they've overturned that recently, but uh, <laughs> just a very funny little unwritten thing about them. Uh, yeah, I think is I mean, really yeah, funny. Like, this is this is this is this is it always comes back to this man. We just get to hate on brown people and also because it's Germany, the Slavs. Yeah, uh, it was never. I mean, like the thing that's really funny is that then obviously it was never official, but from uh, uh, there have been things of that they would uh, possibly, you know, allegedly uh, throw away applications if you'd work for a Russian com like Russian media company. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, oh, god damn it, this is this is. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's deeply upsetting. Uh, but speaking of Russia, do we want to mention the little uh, tiff or tap back and forth? Yeah, happening? I think to kind of end on this sense of me just, you know, uh, you know, going, uh, you know, a uh, Hulkamania on, yeah. on Deutsche Welle today is that my favorite bit of news the past few weeks was that um, Deutsche Welle in Russia today, or I guess they're not called R Russia today, they're called RT now. Mm. Uh, they got in a little back and forth spat because yeah. just out of nowhere, uh, Germany revoked. Uh, well, said that that RT o RT only in German, so RT Deutsch could yeah. not uh, broadcast anymore in Germany, and so their reasoning behind it was that they were that they weren't that they didn't have the proper accreditations and stuff like that however the interior ministry removed their german accreditations last year that was a big thing that then like Zeehofer wanted to do in order to to combat disinformation um and then the um uh RT Deutsch then was had a had a a, a serbian license that they were going on which then because of Schengen rules allowed them to still work in Germany mm. you know because Serbia is kind of in that like weird like limbo area of that then certain economic activity they're allowed to do in European countries certain there aren't but this is one of the ones that then that they could do and then yeah Germany then revoked it saying that then that they were working on a a uh, you know without the proper accreditation and um you know obviously because of the rising tensions between Russia and Ukraine um, the current administration is all over the place with Russia, where yeah. I think that then that Merkel's administration was at least a little bit more on the nose of that. Then it's like, while everyone may not like that Russia's authoritarian, you know, whatever that means, uh, are the, the government's at least willing to, you know, talk with them and RT and uh, RT Deutsch having an office here, while it isn't like the best thing. Up until the last year of the Mackel administration, it's like, well, okay, like they can exist with it. I mean, like, I'm sorry, like media, like media, like biz and shit, like that's far more dangerous in this country than RT. Oh, for sure, I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, RT Deutsch does like, like they do do a lot of, uh, you know, far right propaganda. Like, yeah, RT has always done like. People have always tried to figure out the the the, the politics of it are insane. Yeah, yeah, but the politics is always like anything that could possibly destabilize. Yeah, 
because like they don't have like a right or left kind of view on things like they they gave Nigel they, Farage his own show in the UK yeah. version. Jesse um, Ventura in the United States has his exactly, own show. Like, it's it's all over the fucking place. Um, so it, it it's very simple. It's so looping this back to the Ukraine chat that we had earlier. This does feel very like a huge a huge like auxiliary function of what the United States is doing uh, with this brinksmanship against Russia is getting a lot of allies in line. Yeah. One of the things we talked extensively about on the show is that like Europe is not necessarily playing ball in this or like the new cold war with China, like uh, fucking I'm oh, sorry you said ball in the court in China and it just made me think of that Enos Cantor bizarre video that I uh, saw yeah, yeah, yeah. Of him, <laughs> him being uh, that he posted on his own account of him being tortured by Xi Jinping I'm confused but yes it, go on yeah so like yeah what uh, Duda went and met with uh, um, Xi at the Winter Olympics and stuff like that so yeah like like all sorts of things are happening here but like this whole brinksmanship does like actually function to get a lot of these countries like in line because um, we've had like discussions of joining NATO and militarizing occurring in Sweden and Ireland, which like I'm personally very just like pissed about that. Like Ireland's like increasing its military budget is like, stop, no, sh- shut up, go to jail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, Sweden is also entertaining it as well. I think even Finland a little bit. And that's kind of like, even actually Switzerland also is uh, um, made statements about like how they support the West and that like we're more aligned with the EU. And yeah, they also- support the West in the sense that we will hide all your money. Yeah, exactly. But like, it, it feels very like, I'm support. All right. the whip here. here are, this is, this is critical support for, you know, the great long lost, um, you know, Gaddafi that he oh, wanted to <laughs> split, split Switzerland <laughs> in three. Because it, wasn't that because they like snubbed his son? <laughs> they arrested his son yeah. for like, I think it was like, uh, yeah, I think it was like an assault charge or something. Yeah, yeah, it was something, was it was something not good. It wasn't no. that them like, yeah, his son like had like a, like, like went fucking buck wild in the hotel and like beat one people up or some shit like that. Jesus. And then they arrested him. And then so Gaddafi's like, yeah, like that's it. Switzerland gone. Gone. But okay. So, so sorry, Hannah, no, no, no. just to like finish up my point here, which is like this, one of the things that like, uh, I know we know some of the Ukrainian friends of ours have said that like, this feels very much like. This is pressure being exerted mainly on the German government to not have the conciliatory response to to uh, Russia that they have to buy American gas is also like one of the other things like yep. to get Europe to buy American gas, um, and like this kind of feels like Germany trying to like like release some of the pressure like a little pressure valve thing of just like. Okay, America, we won't do that, but we shut down RT. Would you leave us alone? <laughs> kind yeah. Of it does feel a little bit like that. Yeah, so um, Russia did the exact uh, the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. Was, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, barred uh, Deutsche Welle, which, you know, did actually the country a service by kicking every <laughs> Deutsche Welle journalist out of the country. And then when Scholz went last week to go visit, visit Putin, mm. um, they were very specific that Deutsche Welle journalists were not allowed to be accompanying the Bundeskanzler. So, um, yeah, great powers being really fucking stupid. And I just love the pettiness of this one. This is just like, there's nothing really more to it. I think you're right in the sense that it is like the U.S. trying to like rein its power in some way of countries that are being like, I, I, I'm, I'm legitimately upset that Europe is so cucked that there's no countries is being like, just, just shut the fuck up and stop. Like, not one country is being like, there is no proof on the ground of any of this happening. Yeah. Macron's doing maybe the closest thing of like being like, but it's, it's ha, very, ha, ha, maybe diplomatic. Yeah, it's very like having my, my, uh, la and eating it too. Um, I think that's the French for cake, la tour, la deux. Anyway, the, uh, having my natoire. No, gâteau, gâteau, it's gâteau. What am I doing? Not gâteau. Uh, anyway, the, yeah, like the best response you can get out of Europe is this kind of trying to play both sides, trying to stay out of it. They're like they're not going to stand up to yeah. America on this. And honestly, do it, Joe Biden's bra- Joe Biden won't remember it tomorrow. Yeah, and the other thing is like I, it genuinely seems like a part of this like ratcheting up we're seeing now, like the whole like they're going to invade by like this time next week or whatever, is very. Um, 
does feel like the 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 Macrons and the Erdogans and also Schultz, who's like meaning Tuesday, I think this coming Tuesday. Um, like it just feels like that was all just getting a little too close. Yeah. Like the 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 response of when uh, Russian officials met with uh, European officials that weren't like British or American was always just like. That was very good. That was constructive. That was great. Uh, kind of shit. Versus just like Liz Truss. <laughs> Liz fucking Truss. All right. This is like, like I have to, I have to make a, I have to, I have to, you know, I don't know if I've ever said on the show, uh, Corner Spatey is 100% a pro Sergei Lavrov podcast. <laughs> um, I've said always uh, either, you know, actually, I don't think I've ever said it on the show ever. Sergei Lavrov is like, if he, all right. He has been in his job for 18 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is he is, he is the most intimidating foreign minister probably in the world. Yeah. He made there's the like he met with Blinken in Switzerland and there's the funniest picture of Blinken just like like Lavrov has like the like just like biggest goofiest smile on his face. Yeah. Just like knowing that it's like I'm going to just like you know, smear you across the room. Yeah. Like he is one. Okay. For Lavrov's incredibly intelligent. He also like is like, I think the thing you never saw in the podcast was that, uh, his relationship to, um, what was the island nation? He was like, he was ambassador. Oh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Yeah. And he learned like a bunch of languages that was needed. Oh yeah. 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 He's insane. He's, I mean, he was, he was, yeah, he's 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 like, he's kind of like, he's kind of intimidating. The impression I get of him is he's just like a massively esoteric nerd. Like, <laughs> like seriously, like, you know, like if he wasn't in any kind of position of power, I think he would have like, I think he would be like writing an epic fantasy series where he invented like three languages for or something like oh, that. Like he, he's incredibly detail oriented. That yeah, but I mean the sense of that then because remember he was some of like when these things start then like I mean Lavrov has been very adamant of the fact that them going to like all the international meetings very much making a point to the West that they're the ones who are then like NATO positions and stuff like that to Russia are, you know, the thing that then are of great concern to Russia, this and that, blah, 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 blah. But then there's like these just like little like snide things that you can kind of point out where he's just like poking fun at the fact that he is going to like own you in one way or the other. Yeah. And <laughs> do, it, do you want me to read for yeah. the Liz Truss? It is. Oh God. Like, all right. He's an absolute piece of shit, by the way, too. I'm not like this is like, but I, oh yeah, he, like any like major functionary yeah. of any country, like he's he has blood in his hands, uh, uh in some way or another. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's that contradiction of like the liberal idea of meritocracy. Like, if you heard someone what had been in this position, had been in the same position they've been in for what 14 years. 18 like 18 yeah in like any other job or field you'd probably think oh they probably know their shit really well but then like when it's a governmental position like the liberal knee-jerk reaction is to be like oh no you, you can't have that but then yeah he, he's been here 18 years blinken's been there for a year two years no a, a year, year. And a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah barely over a year we're in the we're in the we're in the 13th month of the biden administration there you go yeah so let's let's and liz trust has been in her position for two months <laughs> fucking i don't know god damn it uh all right so also i'm just convinced too in the sense of that then it's like while all right I, I, this is making the podcast sound so pro-russia the people who are in putin's like internal like government and whatnot you know particularly within like so there's the four the lavrov foreign minister and there's the the deputy foreign minister i forget her name she's also been in the role for like 16 years or whatever yeah putin does have incredibly smart people surrounding him like he wouldn't be a like the thing about putin i think especially for that position yes foreign ministry yeah like foreign like the thing that's really so it's like while people are like oh trump putin this and that the biggest thing that was different between them is like putin surrounds himself with people who are incredibly competent and intelligent yeah trump really you know and i mean that's how you kind of keep this bizarre weird like corporate clientele state of russia i mean around you I feel know like it's it, well, like it's the same as like almost any other country right like the the dumbasses of russian politics are running like 
agricultural and fisheries or whatever. Like it, it, it's, but it's like the same as like a good government in the U.S. Like a competent government in the U.S. still has like a dumbass that they put in charge of like forestry or whatever. Yeah, like uh, people to judge the head of transportation. Or exactly. Something. Yeah. Like, but, but like, I feel that then in the, I feel that then in the West, it's a little bit more like on the nose that then like these people just generally within these governments are just becoming stupider and stupider because like you have, I'm sorry, yeah, like, U.S. is in decline. Like, uh, yeah. uh, uh, uh. And on the Anthony end. Blinken is an is a bumbling idiot. Ned Price, who's the who's the um like the defense uh, speaker for the the, the par- Department of Defense, mm. is um had that lovely clip come out of where that uh you know I forget who the journalist is from from AP uh, calling him out being like well what is this declassified information and Ned Price just like it's you know we declassified it yeah. like these legit like the west wing ruined intelligence of people you know mm-hmm. all across the board that then liberals just have that like oh or fucking you know Jen uh, uh Psaki idiot like yeah. now you just have to be as smart as a screenwriter which is the exactly. world's filth and in the sense of like Germany has a lot of these people too like okay Baybox not dumb but it's just like you know uh, 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 well, they, well, well, when you have these people like in, sh- when you have like that West Wing brain people in charge of like the global hegemon, then that just like constrains the whole, uh, um, the game, the field, the narrative, like what is like normal. Like you can, like it doesn't matter. You can put like the smartest person in charge of the foreign ministry of Germany. You're in America's world now, and therefore like reasonable things won't get uh, uh, entertained. It's the thing Riley talks about with uh, um, how the UK functions of like crackpot realism. Yeah. Like you will be punished for being reasonable. Um, yeah. Like Jeremy, Cor- like there was that really weird tweet that came out of like, uh, the, oh, the this would war- be, yeah. this would be, uh, could you imagine what Jeremy Corbyn's UK would look like? It's like, yeah, that's actually the good position. Like yeah, no yeah, one was like, Ukraine. Yeah. This whole thing of like Jeremy Corbyn was, um, was spotted at like a, a stop the war protest, which is like stop the war is like a, a, um, a charitable organization, NGO type thing in the UK that is like an anti-war organization. And they've largely had the correct take on everything like historically. And, but naturally enough, because of the, this is Stammer's labor or whatever. I was saying it like a German person, Stammer, uh, <laughs> Stammer's labor. It's, um, they have to like they rally around the flag. They 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 love NATO, and he's like said as much as recently, and he's responding to Corbyn. Um, but we have one of the brightest people in the British government. That is that is how many it, it reshuffles itself every three weeks. It seems like yeah, she's new. She's relatively new. Liz Truss. And the, this is the um, yeah. So let's just, let's just do this. This is from a uh, uh, comet Satney. Satney? Huh? How, how do you pronounce Commerzat name? Commerzat. 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 Okay, there we go. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it was a... This, this thing at the end is not a... It's, it's, it's just to signify what the, uh, okay. the letter before it, if it becomes harder or softer. Oh, uh, fun. I'm learning about Cyrillic. Anyway, <laughs> so here we go. I, I'm just going to read this out for us. Uh, The British Foreign Secretary told the head of the Russian Foreign Ministry, Sergei Lavrov, about the need to withdraw Russian armed forces from the Ukrainian border. Sergei Lavrov replied that the military is on the territory of his country. Liz Truss repeated that they should be withdrawn. To this, the Russian minister again objected that the military is not violating anything, since they have the right to conduct any maneuvers on the territory of the Russian Federation. After that, he himself addressed a question to his British colleague. Do you recognize the sovereignty of Russia over the Rostov and Voronezh, Voronezh <laughs> regions. <clears throat> Great Britain will never recognize Russian sovereignty over those regions. Over these regions, the foreign minister replied after a short pause. British ambassador to the Russian Federation, Deborah Bornert, Bornert, Bornert uh, had to intervene in the situation who delicately explained to Miss Truss that we were really talking about Russian regions. Uh, the British embassy in Moscow did not comment on the situation. Uh, recall that during press conference following the meeting, Sergei Lavrov said he was disappointed with the negotiations and noted that he and his colleague did not hear each other. Liz Truss said that no one undermines Russian's, Russia's security. She also stated that she considers it necessary to withdraw Russian troops from the border with Ukraine. He um he he left that press conference early. This is a great photo <laughs> of Liz Truss there at the podium by herself. And the great again, thi- this is a pro Sergey Lavrov podcast. Now. And again, this beautifully like uh, um, 
beautifully cringe photo of Liz Truss in front of the British flag and like an empty podium in front of the Russian flag is accompanied by the fact that like after this happened, she was then scheduled to have a lunch with him. <laughs> so, <laughs> woo! Oh God. Um, I mean, the thing about it too, is I'm pretty sure Lavrov did that because he's massively, mis- he's a massive misogynist. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But like, you know, it's not helping the case there. <laughs> This dress. Um, oh, God. Yeah, critical support for Sergei Lavrov. <laughs> fucking hell. Like, it is... It's it's so fucking stupid, this whole thing. I can't believe we're possibly going to war over this. Um, Woo! Yeah, Let's so, go, baby. I'd like... I want Odessa, all right? If we're, if we're going big, get me Odessa. That city seems kind of cool. Um, all right. But let's let's uh, let's let's round up with a little bit of a uh, uh, some French chat, uh, because it is the year of France, and we've been getting some we've been getting some great French news. Um, so first, the first thing I should probably talk about is I've mentioned it before on the podcast, but to run for the French presidential elections, there's like a system of signatures you need. You yeah, you need what five hundred signatures from people who are within political parties that then are recognized in France or some shit like that. Not quite. You need 500 signatures from any other elected official. Yeah, yeah, that's the sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, what I meant. Most people would get them from mayors. Yeah. And the vast majority of mayors in France are actually independent. Yeah. Uh, don't belong to parties. But you can get them from members of parliament, members of the Senate, and stuff. So last we chatted about this, I basically said, you know, and I, I still stand by this, that this is kind of like quite anti democratic. It gives a massive benefit to already established parties. Um, because you can just like crack the whip and you can get all the like, um, even though Hidalgo is polling at like, I don't know, negative 3% or something at this point. Yeah. Yeah. They're so like this well, uh, uh, well established that she's, she's yeah, already yeah. got, so she's got 790, right? That's right. So, but there's this great little tracker I've been paying attention to here, which tells me, uh, how many signatures people have got, uh, the yellow here indicates uh, parties that are on their way. Ooh. Like they're, they've got, you know. They've got enough numbers by this point that, you know, they're probably likely to get it. But all these red candidates down here. Oh, Those are the ones who are not remotely close. Not looking likely. And guess who's amongst them? Um, Melanchon. Melanchon's among them. Yeah. Yeah. But also Le Pen and Zemmour. <laughs> like there's a like, literal thing. The thing that seems to be happening is there was actually a lot of political backlash. Um, because if you like give your signature as like a mayor, you have to declare that. You only have one to give. Um, so there is like a limited number of signatures, theoretically. Um, but he, they, they faced, all the mayors faced too much backlash for the people they supported. So a lot of them are just not giving their signatures this time around. And that's now resulting in this very real possibility that like uh, Melanchon, who's polling at like 10%, um, which is quite high for this. Zemmour, who's like been at the highest point, like 16%. Uh, um Le Pen, who's kind of considered like default making it into the second round, may not get their signatures, may not even be on the ballot, which would be very farcical and very funny. But it also leads us to like some of these other characters who um, people may not be familiar with, who are actually getting their signatures. So, okay. yeah. At the bottom, we have one that we kind of know, Jadot. He's the head of the Green Party. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have... We're mentioning Arto Natalia, uh, Natalie Arto, I should say. Uh, I've just been informed Trotskyist. What? But sure. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. No. But they've got 419 signatures so far out of 500. They're considered well on their way. Uh, um, uh, Fabian Roussel, who mm-hmm. is like from the Communist Party, um, 381. He's considered on his way. Um, he has like weird kind of workerist takes that i've heard like he's very like pro meat just purely in opposition <laughs> to like veganism he's like he just can't stop uh uh retweeting uh uh amy therese things yeah i, I don't <laughs> think he's gotten that bad but like oof. but the other character who's actually uh doing all right 382 out of 500 so far is uh, uh someone who i've only been made aware of it um first name is jean because of course uh lasel uh, uh lasel yeah i'm gonna say lasel um he's constantly drunk and is a 
rural issues conservative guy. Oh, damn. I was, he was, was going to say he must be cool if he's always No, drunk. but he's he's got some great pictures, so... He's the guy on the left. Of course he is. Yeah. <laughs> a big, beautiful man with a fucking chainsaw. I'm showing uh, Nick a picture of him topless in the uh, in the, the French countryside with a chainsaw and a beret, which I feel like I didn't think real French people did that. <laughs> no, he, he definitely does. Like, this is like the Pepe Le Pew candidate <laughs> in more ways than one. I think he has been Me Too'd a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, mean, too, is not funny, but the fact of, yeah, yeah French. Yeah. yeah. Here he is uh, diving into a group of people at a, at a, in a marquee event. Yeah, he's at Warp Tour. He's at Warp Tour. Le, le Warp Tour. <laughs> le Tour Warp. Le, le, le Tour de Warp. <laughs> le Tour de Warp. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's pretty hilarious. He has um, a ridiculously huge nose, which he, I think he makes jokes about himself, but you know. Um, yeah, he's, he's, um, he might be on the ticket. Like the fucking French election might be so fucking far. Skull. I'm looking forward to it. Woo. But also great account, especially if you understand French, uh, malaise TV, which I believe is like malaise is like the French word for cringe. Um, and they post videos, this particularly great video of Pacrez, uh, um, the Les Republicains candidate, mm-hmm. um, who, is actually the closest. If she makes it into the second round, is probably the only one who can realistically replace Macron. Um, she made a she made a speech about uh, how this campaign is like Star Wars. Wait, what? What does she say? Um, it doesn't seem very coherent. As a Star Wars fan, Nick, you might be disappointed. <laughs> That's okay. No, no. I mean, I want it to be incredibly incoherent. Okay. So the left. Do you know what the left reminds her of? The I don't know. The Empire. The Phantom Menace. Oh, okay. Cool. The best. The best of the best of the prequel trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean that. I mean that statement seriously. But okay. Uh, the only one of these I agree with. Macron is the Empire Strikes Back. If paying attention to what he's been doing in France, <laughs> in <What>? Africa. <laughs> 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 Which, like, I don't think that's what she's going for as the Les Republican candidate. Uh, Le Pen and Zemmour are the attack of the clones. The oh. worst of all the movies, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, but they're very similar. Isn't, isn't that funny? Um, <laughs> um, and, of course, of course, she is... Return of the Jedi. No. A New Hope. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Anyway, here's a picture of Le Pen eating a dog. <laughs> She's kissing a dog. <laughs> she doesn't look very happy. No. Um, shout out to the people who agreed to be in my French group chat. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> you need a French group chat? Yeah. Well, I'm getting all my information. Oh, wow. Okay, sick. Uh, uh, um, this is where I found out that uh, Zamor has his own NFTs. Called ZFTs, yeah. ZFTs. Yeah, I remember you telling me about yeah, yeah. this. Yeah, Villaloon. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. I hope that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. You know what? Uh, 2020, baby. Great start. You know why this is all Sorry, happening. 2022, you know that, right? Sorry, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what am I? My, yeah, see. My brain's mine. Here's my. We're here's painting my, Ukraine. <laughs> So here's 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 my my final take. All this weird news that happened within the last couple of weeks, it's because Mercury's no longer in retrograde. Yeah, okay, sure. And uh, that's that's my. I'm just you know what? Uh, politics aren't real. I'm going to be- I'm becoming an an astrology hoe. I'm going to be an astrology girl boss. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> murdering murdering uh, um murdering members of the Azov Battalion just to align my chakras or whatever. That's fucking sick. <laughs> That would be, you know what? We've invented Nick's dream girl. <laughs> astrology <laughs> hole, astrology hole, as of battalion hunter. That's badass. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> one of you must exist. <laughs> At least one. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, uh, that's our week. We wrap up. I mean, we don't really, you know, do these all too often. Yeah, we do. What are we talking yeah. about? I think I think we should get into the habit of maybe doing like a quick bit of news before we talk about our main topic. Yeah, well, we didn't have a main topic this week because I um. It turns out to be Russia invading Ukraine. Yeah. Well, I mean, we you you plugged me in on Wednesday. You let me go. Yeah. 
I'm 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 still cooling down, cooling cooling my jets, if yeah. you will. Cool your jets. And uh, it's a uh, it's you know uh, it's like a it's like a four day period for me to fully get you know back to equilibrium mm. before you can wind me up again and, <laughs> <laughs> and get me going about something else. Uh. But uh, do we have anything to announce? Uh, get your ZFDs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, man, we can do this, Joe. We can take this all the way to the moon. Um, oh, God. Also, the group chat found a um, African people for Zamor. Uh, oh my God! Group. It had like thirty followers, or whatever. And they couldn't tell if it was a joke or not. <laughs> the profile picture was Zamor photoshopped to look black. I, I love this country. No, I don't. I hate it. It may be worse than Germany. It is worse than Germany. What are we talking about? Uh, everywhere is worse than everywhere else. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, live from uh, Kiev. Yeah. Uh, we will see you guys all next week uh, when we, like I said, live parachute me into <laughs> behind enemy lines. Russia has installed <laughs> us to make our own new Ukrainian version of Deutsche Welle. Yeah. So this is it. We're, our license has been revoked in Germany from <laughs> broadcasting. <laughs> Welcome to Ukra- Ukraine Welle. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll see you guys all on the bonus feed and uh, have a lovely week. Bye-bye. Ciao.